Hey, everyone. Welcome back to The Realm. I'm Gina. Hey, I'm Rich. I'm Rob. <laughs> I'm Brian. Well, we are back for our second week in uh, October of our spooky month where we dedicate this whole month to all things spooky. So last week, in place of Weird Weekly News, we gave you a movie review of Friday the 13th, Part 6. If you did not get to hear that, go back and listen to that. Uh, and um, so tonight, we are reading a listener-submitted scary story real life ghost story guys are you ready for this are you gonna do it so this... <laughs> no i can't i'm getting I over a cold so I... spooky voice <laughs> i don't know how to sound like you know i did not say it, blah, blah there you blah. go there you go perfect <laughs> that's perfect mm -hmm. i was gonna say dracula there you go <laughs> what we need to do is get the guy that played jigsaw in the saw movies and let him read them <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, gosh, I wish I had a spook. I'm getting over a cold, so that's scary enough. But um, all right. So here we go. Let me get my spectacles going here. So this is actually centered, uh, uh, took place at the Congress Hotel in Chicago, Illinois. And this hotel was actually built because of the World Fair that happened. It was back in the 1800s. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with with uh, this hotel, but it is considered one of the most haunted locations in, in Illinois or the Midwest, but you know, everybody has that claim, but I can say the Congress hotel is legit. Uh, and I will talk about my reasons why afterwards. And I'm really looking forward to, to maybe doing a weekend down there with the whole team. Um, mm -hmm. because this was, this is pretty, the, this, the claims at this place is pretty intense. Uh, and you could Google, you could just like go in whatever you use, DuckDuckGo, Google, I don't know, whatever you use for your search engine, you can go into it. Ask Jeeves. You can type in, yeah, Ask Jeeves. Uh, <laughs> you can, um, what, didn't they used to have like Alta Vista or something? I think yes. all these old school search engines. But um, you can type it and just type in uh, Congress Hotel Haunted and there will be so many, uh, so many things like listed about this so many stories okay Rich is showing us his new haircut so, oh <laughs> hi oh Rich. yeah for those of you that are listening to us we're on youtube rich was showing us his new haircut by being turned around <laughs> <laughs> he looks confused <laughs> okay so here do? we go <laughs> you turned around and we could see your new haircut so uh, you must have been talking to jenny no, I need a hat um, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe we need to get some realm hats. I yeah. think they're TRPD hats. That would be really good. All right. Okay. Now, everybody, we got to get into the scary mood. So, this is a scary story. Very uh, scary. Yeah, like scary. that. There you go, Gina. Do that. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, this, this story comes from Luke C out of Kenosha, Wisconsin. So he was kind enough to share his experience with us at the Congress Hotel. And prior to this, and I think he touches on it in the story, he was a big skeptic. So here's the story goes. So I stayed at the Congress on the sixth floor about seven years ago. My ex-girlfriend, my buddy, and his girlfriend all stayed in the same room. My buddy and his girlfriend went to bed around 9 p.m. And my girl and I weren't tired yet, so we set out to explore. We ran into an old security guard that had worked at the hotel for decades, and we asked him to tell us some stories. He told us a story about a group of college kids that booked a room on the sixth floor, but he wouldn't tell us what room number it was. They'd been staying there for a Lollapalooza weekend, and one of the boys went into the bathroom and overdosed while he and while he was overdosed, dosing and dying, his friend heard like mo moaning from him and tried to save him, but was unsuccessful. So fast forward a few months and a businesswoman booked this room under her company's name. She was uh, from out of town and nobody could have possibly known her name. Well, she woke up frightened at about two 30 in the morning with someone saying her name. She called the front desk to inquire and they didn't know what she was talking about. And this just kept happening to people who would stay in this room. So there's actually claims you could 
find this online. I'm adding that in. So the rest of his story says, I didn't think too much of it as I was skeptical of ghosts at the time. We went back to our room and we went to bed. We didn't tell my buddy or his girlfriend about the story. And at 2.30 in the morning, I woke up because I heard what I thought was someone sitting in the chair next to my buddy's bed. Obviously, I didn't see anything, so I went back to sleep. And as I began to fall back asleep, my buddy woke up panicked and yelling my name, asking if I was just standing over him yelling his name. He had absolute zero idea about the story that the security guard had told me, so this could not have influenced his experience. I clearly was 100% sold from that point on that we had booked the room where this kid had overdosed and experienced the same haunting as the other individuals. I'm now a firm believer of afterlife and ghosts. What do you guys think? I think I, I think want to stay to in that room. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to find out what room number it was from him. Yeah. Like he did just not get that room that. in. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. We can recreate it. Well, I can tell you that just to kind of bring some validity to this, Kez and I stayed, I took Kez on a date like probably six years ago, seven years ago to Chicago and we stayed at the Congress Hotel. And one of the nights that we were there, actually, I think we only stayed one night, actually. I don't want to lie about it. It was one night, I think. And... When we were downstairs, I kind of made a joke. I was like, oh, give us the most haunted room, you know, just making a joke. And they kind of chuckled. But I was surprised that the security guard, like, gave as much information um, to Luke as he did, which I think is cool. Like, I'm really glad that that he shared that story because we tried to ask people that work there multiple times. And we've stayed there a couple times, like, just to give us information. And nobody would. They wouldn't hmm. confirm anything. So we go to this room and we put all of our stuff in. We have we have uh, tickets to go somewhere. So we're like, okay, we brought camera. We bought equipment. We're like, let's go do our thing. We'll come back. And we came back to the room and the drawer was open on the um, dresser in the room. When we walked back in, we're like, what the fuck? We did not leave that open. And then so we like somebody come in the room. There was nothing missing. So we actually pushed and there was kind of a lot of activity in the hall. So we pushed the drawer shut and we're like, OK, whatever. We need to set up some equipment before we leave again Um, because we we're going to investigate later in the night. But we we're just trying to enjoy Chicago. So we're like, oh, we'll, we'll set up equipment next time and through the night. Um, and so we left, came back and the drawer was open again. So this hmm. time we're like, okay, we need to kind of try to debunk this. We need to try to, to, to figure this out. So we pushed it shut and we started jumping all the way around the carpet on the floor next to the desk. We pounded on the top of it, pounded on the sides. We opened and closed the door. We went outside, pounded on the wall on because it was along the wall uh, where the door was. We did everything that you could think of and it wouldn't budge. And in fact, it was the kind of dresser drawers that have that like soft close, you know, the quiet close where you mm -hmm. like close it and then it grabs it that last inch or so. And so it's those are a little bit harder to open, right? Whenever you first open them because of that mechanism that creates that. So I'm like, this room's got to be haunted, whatever. So we sit down on the bed and we're like, okay, do we set up the equipment now or not? And I shit you not. And I, I swear on everything that I ever have, like, this is one, I am, this is not, this is literally, I feel like I need to preface that because this is so, this so happened. We we're sitting on the bed and trying to figure out our next move. And all of a sudden this drawer opens all by itself. As we're sitting there, we watch this fucking drawer open up. No joke. We both scream. We're like freaked out. I <laughs> grab the phone off the, I, I like grab the phone and I dial the desk and I'm like out of breath because I'm like freaking the fuck out. And I keep staring at the drawer and I'm like, I'm like, the drawer keeps opening in this room and just open. I'm like, is this room haunted or what? Like, what's going on with this room? And this is another non, like, this is another 100% true thing is that the girl on the other end of the phone said, I cannot confirm nor deny 
Would you <laughs> like a different room? That's what she said. Would you like a different room? I cannot confirm or deny. I was like, are you shitting me? So we're like, so Kez and I looked at each other and I'm like, do you want a different room or do you want to like, do you want to just go for this? You know, and we're like, no, fuck it. We're staying. So we did. And we set up, um, we set up a camera and we had, I had bought this like old school camera that like an actual handy cam that had like a tape in it. Um, and so that camera actually broke after that time. It didn't work anymore and we could not get the film to play. So since then we kind of put the tape somewhere, you know, it's, it's like in one of our boxes and we've never opened it back up again. So I feel like I need to pull that tape now and try to find somebody that can maybe transfer it to like a DVD or like even just a, you know, something on a cloud or something so that we can watch it as evidence. But we left the camera Mm -hmm. rolling pretty much all, all night till, you know, till the tape ran out. Um, and we did wake up several times in the middle of the night feeling like something was there, uh, but, you know, never saw anything. And I'll tell you, this hotel is really pretty magnificent. It's like you walk in and it's like you're taking a step back in time. But now when we were just recently there a few months ago, if you remember, we went and stayed there in February. Um, and we didn't really do some, any heavy investigating. We actually, we stayed the night and it was very quiet room. There was no activity going on. You couldn't even really feel anything there. Um, and, but we kept some stuff going, recorders going, we didn't pick up anything, got a couple K2 hits and that was about it. Um, they've kind of modernized the front lobby now. So you don't really feel like you're going back in time as much, but, um, yeah, so that was our experience with the Congress Hotel. So maybe, any just maybe, they put that mechanism that pulls the drawer in backwards. Not no, even because it was doing this. So, it was, <laughs> it was pulling it. No, it was pulling it the way it was working the way that it should. Gosh, don't make me feel like a liar. No, no this is how you troubleshoot. This is how you troubleshoot. Yes. No, I don't know. Do you guys think do you guys think it's all bullshit or what? Um well, no. I mean it's one of those hotels where there's a lot of experience, but I mean, did you have other experiences outside of one drawer? Yeah, I mean, we would get we would get hits on the EMF. We would get those weird, you know, creepy spooky mm-hmm. feelings. Um I have to say we enjoyed drinks while we were down there so like by the time we got back we didn't get to do as much investigating as we thought we were going to do we went to a uh a, a byob drinking um like play <laughs> you go down there and you watch this play it was like an interactive drinking game but it was a play i don't know it was very cool um anyway so yeah that got a lot of hands so we didn't we didn't do as much investigating when we went back there as we wanted to, but just having those like few hours of having hits on the equipment and watching that, you know, I, I who knows what we might have caught on video that we've never been able to watch. That's that's what the real bummer is. Hmm. But if any listeners out there have stayed at the Congress Hotel, do you remember what room number that was? Any... Um, For ours, I can look at the reservation. I'll look at the reservation because we should have somebody stay in the room that Luke oh, yeah. stayed in. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Somebody Absolutely. stay in the yeah. room that we stayed in. We, if we go yeah. there, we and then that. definitely stay in that room. We should do two nights and like one group stay in one, like one suite, like one night, and then we flip flop the next night. That would be kind of a cool idea. But let's, uh, I want to say thank you to Luke so much for submitting that story to share with our listeners for our spooky story tonight. Yes. October. Thanks, Luke. Appreciate it. Yeah. So with that, that will end this episode of our scary stories in place of weird weekly news. Uh, So catch us every Monday during the month of October for a full length episode. We'll be talking about spooky stuff every Monday and doing scary stories or other spooky. And is it anecdotes? Anecdotes, right? I don't know. I always mess those words up. Anyway, some cool (laughs) shit days in place of weird weekly news that'll be kind of scary so uh join us and then finish out the rest of the season with us that'll take us to the end of the year and every other monday we will have full-length episode and every wednesday weird weekly news brought your way so uh with that ciao everyone see ya peace out